Oh man, that's a good question. How did, I find, how did we find out she was pregnant? Since we weren't expecting, it, it was definitely a surprise for both of us. I totally forgot. I'm serious. If it was a girl, we hadn't contemplated little boy names, but if it was a girl, we knew it would be Darcy Ann. A few weeks had passed, and I started experiencing crippling pains, and um, eventually I went to my OBGYN. It was, it was a Thursday, so typically on Thursdays we, we have our dates. She left, I went back to work, and in the middle of a meeting I got a phone call. The doctor called me and told me that she was incompatible with life. Her heart was defective, it had holes. Um, she had cysts in, in various parts of her uh, different organs. I, I know she had cysts in the brain. The specialist we went to, he had worked with babies for years and years, had never seen a baby live longer than 24 hours with trisomy 18. We visited many specialists. Um, most of them, they, their initial response is abortion. Well, we were prepared for the, the doctor to present that option. You feel a pressure. You know, you feel this pressure that, are you making the right decision? Because when it's 50-50, whether you're born or not, in the world standards, it's the child is not worth it, or uh, you don't want the child to go through suffering anyway, so you might as well end it now. Should I continue to go through this pregnancy as if she's gonna live and plan a baby shower, or do I just go ahead and live as if she won't? We just knew that Darcy was God's, and that um, you know we just trusted in His sovereignty in whatever He was about to do at that time. I always relied on that He will never leave you nor forsake you. And every time we hit a bump in the road, God was there. He would send somebody, something. Various families, you know, visited us, uh, called us. But what's more significant is we were surrounded by people we didn't know. People were praying around the world. Thousands even, that were praying for little Darcy. Jesus said, you, you don't get because you, you don't ask. So we ask, we, we ask Jesus every day and every, every single one of our prayers, you know, Lord, please make Darcy healthy. Please make the diagnosis wrong and let her be like one of our kids that we can grow old with. After about a month, we went back to the doctor and he was amazed because he didn't see the brain cyst. They had gone away. And the other conditions were gone as well. So the only remaining thing that was huge were the holes in, in her heart. There were all little hints that I'm still here, that you're not gonna have to walk this journey alone. And I eventually got to the point to where I started believing that I was going to see her born alive. I remember the day that I went into labor. I didn't realize it, but I went into the hospital 10 centimeters dilated. I had no clue, because I kept avoiding it, thinking that was gonna be the end. Oh, there she comes. When she did come out, one push, she was out. And the doctor questioned the diagnosis on the film. Did it show a total trisomy 18 or just a total trisomy 18 mosaic? They said four. Did they? Yeah. But I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not seeing most of the people. Yeah, I'm not either. She came out screaming. No clench fist, rocker bottom feet, uh, whatever. I was expecting the worst. And she just looked, sounded like a healthy baby. We, we were thinking, God answered our prayers. Obviously, I'm a bit concerned there may be some distress later. I went outside to use the restroom. On the way back, the head nurse stopped me and said, um, I lost my son uh, not too long ago, and I just want to let you know that you're about to face the darkest moments of your life. And, uh, and I just uh, I, I just remember just looking at her, um, <clears throat> you know, feeling sorry for her, but at the same time uh, realizing that what she's saying is true. Although she didn't have a lot of the outward signs, we knew by that night and the next day she wasn't feeding well and 
we knew we were going to have some difficulties. They really didn't give her much of a chance. She said, well, you might as well take her home. You know, we thought about Job. You know, God gives, God takes away. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. But we're His, and Darcy was His. So we were going to do our best to, um, to take care of the gift. Okay, ready? Happy birthday to you. We wanted her to have a manicure, a pedicure, go to McDonald's, go to a banquet, dance with me and, and Jason. Those are memories that typically you have a lifetime, years and years to, to do, and we just wanted to experience as much of that as we can. Family coming over, going to church. She rode the motorcycle with, with Daddy and we went to the park. But I tell you that the biggest joy, one time I was carrying her, I was in the bedroom, and, and you hear it, right? And I just, I was happy. I put her down on the bed and, and I changed her diaper because I changed thousands of diapers. And I was holding that diaper, just jumping up and down. I said, she pooped. <laughs> so I guess it gave me um, some hope that I'm still hoping that God would, uh, that God was going to, to heal this little, little child against all odds. But yeah, it was, it was hard. <laughs> I want a baby. I think when you have a terminally ill baby, and even though you're really big on life and support life, there comes a time when you're okay because you don't want to see them suffer anymore. Darcy, mommy sees. I love you. It was almost as if Tracy was saying, okay, you know, God, she's yours. You know, whatever happens, we'll accept, I'll accept. But, you know, Tracy went to bed and my typical routine is to hold Darcy and I've got a stethoscope because I like listening to her heart. It just slowed down to to nothing. And I, I knew that was it. And I walked around to Tracy's side and she slowly woke up. So I remember her looking at me just for a second and then she looked at Darcy. And this painful, um, guttural uh, cry, it wasn't a loud cry, but you knew it was from deep within. Because here's a mother that uh, that knew that that day would come, but when it comes, you know, it, you still don't believe that it's there. Uh, you know, he's a giver of life. You know, why not just give us a little crumb from his table? But uh, he said no. I can't think of any worse situation than being a father and having your kids precede you. Uh, but, you know, God said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. When I started um, owning uh, the thought that, you know, Darcy's gonna pass, right? That was like a no. But when God says no, there's always a reason why. We see it over and over again in our lives that, you know, with every what's everything that seems negative at that moment, you know, um, God always turns it into good. See you soon, Darcy. Knowing that I was going to have to watch my child take her last breath, it's tough. Here's a million and something kisses. How many kisses is that, Mom? But I learned that I truly do believe that God exists. I believe that He gets you through things that you think you can't go through. He gets you through something you know you cannot walk alone. Bingo. All right, he's buck naked. Kissy. Here, kissy again. 
<laughs> if I would have gotten the abortion, there still would have been pain involved with that decision. There was pain involved in carrying her to term, but I would have missed out on all the blessings, all of the people that I met along the way, how God showered our family with mercy and grace. We had 15 days with her that was not supposed to be, and it was the closest to God we have ever been. Yeah, I didn't give my, my daughter up, right? It was out of my control. But for God to do that, to give His only Son to die and to experience all that pain for us, you know, I, I can't even imagine the love that He has for us. You are a little visitor from heaven. You gave us a message and it's been delivered quite clearly. When you go up to heaven, you go thank Jesus for us, okay? I love you. Thank you.